basically said, ask not what you can do for your country, but ask what you can do for your country. The Honorable Tiffany Henyard, the first female and the youngest mayor of Dalton. This is Dorothy Brown. Dorothy Brown is the infamous circuit of courts for Cook County. And she is riddled in scandal. So it should be to no surprise to anybody that she is the campaign advisor for Tiffany Congratulations, Henry. Madam Mayor. Thank you. We did it, y'all. Hello, everybody. Pink Camera Magic here, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to discuss the mayor of the city of Dalton. For those of you who don't know, her name is Tiffany Henyard, and she is the mayor of Dalton, Illinois. Dalton's a small suburb just outside of Chicago. And aside from being the mayor of Dalton, she also is the town leader of the town of Thornton as well. Uh, both are elected positions. While I was visiting Chicago this past month, I was able to sit in on one of her board meetings. After doing a little bit of research into her nonprofit, I discovered some things that made me come to the conclusion that in my personal opinion, I believe personally that that charity Tiffany Cares is a complete fraud and a front for other things. Tiffany is probably one of the most corrupt politicians that I have ever seen in my entire life. And that's saying a lot because I know Chicago's home to many corrupt politicians over the years. But anyways, we have Tiffany Henyard here. This is her mugshot where she was arrested for trespassing in a vehicle. And aside from that, she's behind a number of failed businesses, which include things such as real estate and a Good Burger restaurant. So anyways, uh, going back, she was elected about two years ago. Um, this city started out in about a $2 million deficit, ended up at this point, two years later, at a $7 million deficit. One comment to, on the financials, and I don't know how I'm uh, neglected to do this. All the way until last month, we were receiving monthly financial reports. This month, we did not receive a monthly financial report the way that we traditionally would. When we talk about the deficit, Last fiscal year through May, the deficit was $2.5 in our operating account. This year through the report we got, which was September 30th, I pulled that up as you were speaking. So from May through September, there was an additional $4.2 million of deficit. So you couple those two together, the deficit is growing and it's approaching $7 million. She's also made some very questionable hiring decisions, which include a sex offender who just got out of prison for a brutal attack on two young girls. A part of his job requires him to go into people's homes. She hired the retired Dorothy Brown as an advisor and she's making a nice six-figure income. Now let's talk about her spending. She's been known to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on trips, expensive restaurants, security detail, hair, nails, even a private DJ for her meetings. When asked if the city of Dalton can afford to have these police officers off the streets and on duty for the mayor, she told him that they absolutely cannot and they need to be out on the streets. Not only do they go on trips with the mayor, but they also have massive amounts of overtime. You see, Tiffany herself, she gets paid nearly $300,000 for acting as both mayor of the city of Dalton and also the supervisor for the village of Thornton. Now here she is dressed up as Nino Brown from New Jack City. Then she went into a city hall meeting with a little help from Rihanna and her own DJ. Every single resident, pay me what you owe me. Thank you, DJ. And then, of course, there's all the billboards and all the signs and everything that you can see has her face and her name on it. Some would say that this is a sneaky tactic to get the taxpayers to pay for her self-promotion. And speaking of self-promotion, she also initiated a bill that would make it so that anybody who beats her or the next upcoming mayor would only get paid $25,000 a year. But if she's reelected, she'll get to keep her salary. Take a look at how this genius investigative journalist was able to track down the amount of money that these cops are getting paid. Freedom of information request we did to see how much overtime these officers are making on her security detail. Oh, wow. 162 hours. 162. Well, that's nothing. What goes through your mind when you see these numbers? Um, uh, it, it's, it's disappointing. It's frustrating. The officers are paid every two weeks, which without overtime is 80 hours. But when they're put on Henyard's detail, that 80 hours balloons to well over 100 hours, sometimes 200 hours. And in the case of Officer Terry Young last May, 303 hours worked over a two-week period. 
Did you hear that, guys? A single paycheck, which is two weeks worth of work, over $13,000. How? How does a person put in a two-week pay period, 303 hours? That's impossible. But I'm not completely opposed to her having security detail and having these police officers follow her around and be in her presence because the more cops that are in her presence and around the mayor, the less cops are going to be out there harassing people. And we found Dalton credit card statements showing that Henyard takes the detail with her even when she travels out of town, spending thousands of dollars on plane tickets, lodging, and meals for the officers. Do anything as it relates to with credit cards. As you heard me speak today in my board meeting about, I do not handle that. Some of those charges are for you, though. No, sir. You didn't go to Las Vegas? Mm. What, what is that? No comment. You don't know if you were in Las Vegas? Of course I do. Were you? It's not paid by them. Did you fly first class to Las Vegas? All right, any other questions? So you're not going to answer how taxpayer dollars are being spent? That seems I just, odd. I just answered it. What do you mean? I just answered your questions. You said you wouldn't answer about Las Vegas. You asked me a question and I responded. So, any other so next, we're going to talk about her charity, which in my personal opinion, I believe is actually a front and there's no charity at all to speak of. And this is why. So I started digging a little bit and decided to do some Google searches just to see some information about the charity. And to start, the charity is not in her name, which is very interesting. But the foundation's named after her. So it's like she's the face of the foundation, but the charity itself is not in her name. She's not even named in the board of directors. Now, all employees of a nonprofit have to be paid at least minimum wage. However, there are no records of any type of payments. Now, when snooping around to find her online presence, I stumble across her Facebook page that has only one picture and no posts. They didn't even post anything about her event. And that was the only type of social media outlet that I could find that has anything to do with Tiffany Cares. They have no standard website. So if I were a concerned citizen and wanted to make a donation, I would have no way to do that. And the only known event that this charity has participated in is a fundraising walk from Chicago to Springfield. And the irony of that is that they actually had rented a lot of hotel rooms. So the walking was just pretty much for show. Which leads me to why I believe that this fictitious fundraising charity actually exists in the first place. Now remember, Tiffany is not somebody that's named in association with the charity specifically. She's the name of the charity. So then I asked myself, why would Keith create a charity that the public was not able to donate to? And it's not even registered with the Attorney General. But yet, she uses her city connections and taxpayer dollars to promote her personal charity. Or should I say, Keith Freeman's charity. And the city boards approved a $10,000 donation to her personal charity right before a big event. At that event, they racked up thousands of dollars in fees for hotels and dinners. So it's of my personal opinion that the charity is a complete scam. Now, if I were to speculate on why I think they chose the charity and what they're doing with the charity, I think that she's doing it for personal promotion. As you know by the billboards, she's very big on promoting herself. But also, she could be using it for something even worse, some more legal activities, perhaps a way to swindle money from the taxpayers. And why is Tiffany not a part of the charity on paper? I think it's to disassociate herself in case if there's any type of conflict of interest should anything go down. But of course, this is only my opinion. If you like this type of content and want to see more investigations such so as this, please make sure that you do me a favor, let me know in the what comment section, as well as so subscribe to my channel me? and like the video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a great night. No, trustee that was here. They said, if I get elected, I won't take any pay. To every damn that was up there. J.F. Kennedy said, ask not what you can do for your country, but ask what you can do for your country.